editor and motion graphics designer from Sydney, Australia. More recently, I've been indulging one of my longtime passions, illustration and comics. And to assist me in creating assets and uh, artwork, I have, in fact, been using Blender. Um, over the years, uh, my methods have evolved. I've gone from creating simple reference models uh, rendered with the edge pass. Who remembers that? Um, uh, to producing custom shaders and compositing techniques which faithfully simulate the look and feel of quality comic illustrations. And uh, here's some examples from uh, some old work of mine. Uh, it's a comic that I did when I was young and stupid called Pandia. And so I thought, hey, as the first pass in a comic, uh, why not just do this sprawling saga sci-fi that will go for 26 issues and have a cast of thousands? Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, little did I know. Uh, here are just some examples of work, um, some renders from various projects. Uh, this one, uh, oh, and, uh, and uh, some process here. We can see uh, the Blender scene, the final render, and then uh, I drew this in Critter, I believe, uh, over the top uh, to integrate. This is just a commission for, um, for someone. Um, this was uh, probably the last issue I did of, of Pandia, which was my sci-fi comic. And you can see where the 3D sets kind of merge with the 2D characters and how they're sort of integrated into the comic. Um, more recently, I submitted a story to an anthology published by Forward Comics in New York uh, called Guan, and the story was loosely based on my in-laws' um, experience escaping Vietnam in the early 80s, but I just put a sci-fi twist on it. Um, and uh, used Blender, I actually put uh, drawings on planes and rendered them directly out of Blender so I can get a bit of a bloom effect and use the compositor a little bit. Uh, it was an early experiment. Um, Looking back on it now, I'm like a bit, you know, um, doesn't look as great as I remember it. Uh, and most recently, I've been uh, working on a, a webcomic based on um, my personal experiences, yeah, superheroes, um, uh, being a stay-at-home dad, father of two young girls, uh, doing all of that sort of stuff. It's called Home Based. And uh, it's basically just like a gag strip comic. And a couple of these have been published in various publications in Australia. Uh, this one here um, about you know, going to a comic convention, uh, people dressed up as super superheroes, but what happens when the train stops all of a sudden? All the superheroes are yelling for help. Um, but as you can see, here's a, a 3D set that then gets rendered and then composited in uh, to the final comic. All the line work was actually done in freestyle uh, for, for the backgrounds as well. Uh, assets uh, like this, uh, here's a test render of that asset, and then you can sort of see where it, uh, it sort of fits in there. This is a funny comic about you know, bumping into some aliens, you know, what if they want to take us over, and uh, you know, so the wife gets out, tells them to Google our rich um, history and culture, um, but all they're really interested in is in looking for tentacle porn. Um, and so on and so forth. I mean, this one, just the background was rendered in cycles. It's a stupid comic about two space marines. One of them's been kicked out by his girlfriend. The other one's just come back from glorious battle. Um, and then they get kicked out of the pub. And the stupid joke here is that the pub was inside the, the nostril of a, a giant ru ruined mech head. And so the last line there is, come on, Neil, let's blow this nose. Ba boom ching. Um, and uh, tying it back to the husband and wife in the comic, uh, they're sort of playing Warhammer 40,000 there in the bottom panel. Um, and yeah, uh, just sort of various methods to just utilize Blender inside of the comic. Now, work in the wild. It's not all personal stuff. Way back in about 2009, who remembers the uh, TV show Heroes? Yeah. Well, they had this tie-in comic and uh, an artist working out of Melbourne called Jason Badawa, a very talented artist. Um, we sort of hit up a friendship, uh, a mutual love of the show, of comics and everything like that, and he was hard-pressed for deadline, needed some reference shots. Uh, and so uh, from halfway across the world, he was working in LA at the time. Uh, he sort of emailed me with some, uh, a map and said, oh, can you produce just some blocks and, uh, and some things. And I was like ready to render him edge lines that he could just edit, but uh, he just wanted the references. And as you can see here, here are my reference shots. Uh, this is his black and white drawing over the top and he insisted on illustrating everything over the references and there's the finished uh, colors. 
just a couple of months ago, uh, another artist contacted me to get some uh, reference material for a set he was working on so he can get some interesting angles. And again, you know, I applied some textures and did some freestyle line work and some uh, compositing to get some shadows. Um, but of course, uh, yeah, he liked to hand draw everything as well. And this is the finished product, uh, just sort of drawing over. He just opened up Blender and rendered out his own um, reference shots for the, the panels that uh, he wanted to produce. So one of the things I do uh, is I try to monetize and use social media to best advantage. Um, and so obviously everyone has got to have a website and a little bit of a media presence, um, sort of active on Facebook and Instagram, sort of showing off a lot of the work that I do. Uh, YouTube has become very important, especially in kind of drumming up support for uh, Patreon, which sort of pays for my time to produce a lot of content. I, I like to share a lot of my methods uh, with the wider community uh, via Patreon and YouTube. And uh, recently, you know, I've, I hit the whopping landmark of a thousand subscribers. Yeah, I know, it's, I'm, I'm famous. <laughs> um, and, uh, and sort of like sort of release uh, models for free and everything like that. And uh, people like to drop by, uh, check out some stuff. I, I sometimes do little giveaways uh, and that sort of thing. And this was a modeling video that I did uh, showing people how to actually create that for themselves. Um, a Patreon has been fairly successful the past year. Um, it's sort of paid my way to not only, uh, you know, Adobe subscriptions and stuff like that, but I use uh, a portion of that money to then support other things like uh, a couple of Blender channels and, and, and so on and so forth. So uh, the supporters who support me sort of end up supporting other efforts that sort of uh, benefit the community. And uh, for the patron uh, supporters, I kind of give uh, away some you know, exclusive shaders and exclusive models and that sort of stuff that they then can use in their own projects. And it's all royalty free under Creative, uh, Creative Commons Zero or something like that. Now, the process. I'm pretty sure you're all wondering. Um, I do tend to utilize freestyle a lot, um, but I've come up with custom shaders that emulate the look and feel of a comic book before compositing them all using the Blender compositor. Um, I create various shaders for various purposes. Here you see um, a shader that uh, basically simulates the, the idea of like inks. Uh, which and like they don't just work for shiny metals. Uh, glass renders really beautifully, chrome effects, and even some glows. Uh, and then when it renders, it kind of looks like an illustration. Um, but color ones are where like people are really interested in. Uh, these ones are in cycles, so they take quite a while to render. Um, and more recently, of course, I've been utilizing Eevee. Uh, and so I rejigged a bunch of the shaders for Eevee. And to give you an idea, that model there, the cycle shaders might render in about two and a half minutes for a model like that. Eevee will render in about eight seconds. So the advantages, uh, I'm really liking the changes in 2.8. Um, and the compositing method is pretty simple. There's a pass with the shaders. I do this thing with the alpha mat to get a nice outline around the, uh, the sides. I utilize a freestyle pass and then stick it all together with some, uh, some funky effects to get the final image, uh, as you can sort of see there. Uh, yeah, we're pretty good for time, okay. Um, and so the advantage of this, why do, do it all this way? Well, if you've got a very complicated asset or a set or, uh, or something that you want to render for an action scene or something like that, it's one of those measure twice, cut once type of scenarios where once everything is applied, and you're happy with the render, you just change the camera angle and the next render is just as good as the first one. So it saves you a lot of time in cr creating and producing those assets. And what's even better is because these things are procedural, you can take or append one of these shaders and uh, stick it on a completely different model. Um, and with very little tweaking, uh, you sort of get the same kind of results. So going forward, uh, you know, my methods are always evolving, and I'm really liking a lot of the new features in 2.8, such as the grease pencil. And I've sort of taken the time this October to jump into this uh, Inktober challenge. Is anyone else doing that? No, I see like one hand, that, that's cool. Oh, I've got a light so I can see some hands, awesome. Yeah, um, it's fun to do, and I gave myself the challenge of doing all of the uh, Inktober challenges inside of the grease pencil, so I could really put it through its paces, try to break it, try to figure out what it's all about. And here's one from day four, Harry Potter and the Logical Fallacies, because 
When people are yelling logical fallacies at each other, they sort of sound like the kids from Harry Potter. Um, now, I'm not sure on the status of freestyle. I haven't really looked it up. I'm not sure if it's going to be ported to the next uh, version, but I'm pretty certain that whatever it is, if it's freestyle or something that replaces it, um, basically those methods are just going to get even better, and I'm, I'm sure that I'll figure out a way to, to utilize it uh, in my workflow. Now, I'm really enjoying utilizing 3D space to compose 2D drawings, and this can open up many possibilities for comics, including combining them with comic shaded objects within the same scene. And as I create the new techniques and methods, uh, I really like to share these processes uh, with the wider community as well, be it Patreon, YouTube, Blender community groups, and uh, I even contribute articles to Blender Nation, so you can always see it there as well. Uh, here's a few places that you can find me. You can find me on YouTube, my official uh, website, and of course, Patreon. Um, but yeah, look, guys, thanks for your time, um, and I uh, hope to see you around.